on Paddington Bear on the beach, did you? Mr. and Mrs. Brown first met Paddington on a railway platform in London. The station was crowded with people, trains were whistling, taxis hooting, porters rushing about. Mr. Brown first saw it, but there was so much noise that he had to tell his wife several times before she understood. A bear on Paddington station? Don't be silly, there can't be, said Mrs. Brown. But there is, said Mr. Brown, over there behind those mail bags. It was wearing a funny kind of hat. He caught hold of his wife's arm and pushed her through the crowd. There you are, said Mr. Brown, pointing towards a dark corner. I told you so. Mrs. Brown could just see a small furry object and around its neck was a label with some writing on it. Why, Henry, she exclaimed. I believe you were right after all. It is a bear. She peered at it more closely. It seemed a very unusual kind of bear. It was brown in colour, a rather dirty brown, and it was wearing a duffel coat and a most odd-looking hat with a wide brim. From beneath the brim, two large round eyes stared back at her. The bear stood up and politely raised its hat. Good afternoon, it said in a small, clear voice. Good afternoon, replied Mr. Brown. There was a moment of silence. Can I help? asked the bear. Well, no, replied Mr. Brown. As a matter of fact, we were wondering if we could help you. You're a very small bear, she said. The bear puffed out its chest. I'm a very rare sort of bear, he replied importantly. There aren't many of us where I come from. And where is that? asked Mrs. Brown. Darkest Peru, whispered the bear. I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. A stowaway? Mr. Brown looked anxiously over his shoulder. He almost expected to see a policeman standing behind him. Yes, said the bear. I used to live with my Aunt Lucy in Peru, but she had to go to a retirement home for bears. You don't mean to say you've come all the way from South America by yourself, exclaimed Mrs. Brown. The bear nodded. But what did you do for food? asked Mr. Brown. You must be starving. Bending down, the bear unlocked the suitcase with a small key and brought out an almost empty jar. I ate marmalade, it said rather proudly. Bears like marmalade and I lived in a lifeboat. But what are you going to do now, said Mr. Brown. Oh, I shall be all right, I expect. The bear bent down to do up its case. She noticed some writing on the label. It said, please look after this bear. Oh, Henry, she said, what shall we do? We can't just leave him here. There's no knowing what might happen to him. Can't he come and stay with us for a few days? She looked down at the bear. He is rather sweet, and he'd be such good company for Jonathan and Judy. They'd never forgive you if they knew you had left him here. Mr. Brown looked doubtful. He bent down. Would you like to come and stay with us? He asked. That is, if you have nothing else planned. The bear jumped and his hat nearly fell off with excitement. Oh, yes, please. I should like that very much. I've nowhere to go, really. Well, then, that's settled, said Mrs. Brown. And you can have marmalade for breakfast every morning. Every morning? The bear looked as if he could hardly believe its ears. 
I only had it on special occasions at home. Every morning starting tomorrow, said Mrs. Brown, and honey on Sundays. By the way, said Mr. Brown, you'd better know our names. This is Mrs. Brown and I'm Mr. Brown. The bear raised its hat politely, twice. I haven't really got a name, he said. Well, not an English one. Then we'd better give you one, said Mrs. Brown. It ought to be something special. I know what. We found you on Paddington Station, so we'll call you Paddington. Paddington? The bear repeated it several times to make sure. Mrs. Brown stood up. Good. Now, Paddington, I have to meet our little daughter Judy off the train. I'm sure you must be thirsty after your long journey, so you go along to the buffet with Mr. Brown and he'll buy you a nice cup of tea. Paddington licked his lips. I'm very thirsty, he said. He picked up his suitcase and pulled his hat down firmly over his head. Now, Henry, look after him, Mrs. Brown called after them. And for goodness sake, take that label off his neck. It makes him look like a parcel. Mr. Brown found a table for two in the corner of the buffet. By standing on a chair, Paddington would just rest his paws comfortably on the top. Well, Paddington, said Mr. Brown, as he placed two steaming cups of tea on the table and a plate piled high with cakes. How's that to be going on with? Paddington's eyes glistened. It's very nice, thank you. Do you think anyone would mind if I stood on the table to eat? Before Mr. Brown could answer, he had climbed up and placed his right paw firmly on the bun. It was a very large bun, the biggest and stickiest of all, and most of the insides found its way onto Paddington's whiskers. Mr. Brown stirred his tea and looked out of the window, pretending he had tea with a bear on Paddington Station every day of his life. Henry! It was Mrs. Brown's voice. Henry, whatever are you doing to that poor bear? Look at him. He is covered all over with cream and jam, and he's got his nose stuck in a paper cup. Mr. Brown jumped up in confusion. He seemed rather hungry, he answered. Mrs. Brown turned to her daughter. This is what happens when I leave your father alone for five minutes. Judy clapped her hands excitedly. Oh, Daddy, is he really going to stay with us? Paddington suddenly became aware that people were talking about him. He looked up to see that Mrs. Brown had been joined by a small girl. He jumped up, meaning to raise his hat, and slipped on a patch of strawberry jam. He waved his paws wildly in the air, and then before anyone could catch him, he somersaulted backwards and landed with a splash with one foot in his cup of tea. The tea was very hot, and he jumped up again and promptly stepped into Mr. Brown's cup. Judy laughed until the tears rolled down her face. Oh, Mummy, isn't he funny, she cried. He looks as though he is wearing Wellington boots. You wouldn't think, said Mrs. Brown, that anyone could get into such a mess in so short a time. Paddington took off his hat and started to fill it with the remains of the cakes. Mr. Brown coughed. <coughs> Perhaps so, he said. We'd better go. I'll see if I can find a taxi. Paddington stepped gingerly off the table and Judy took one of his paws. Come along, she said. We'll take you home and you can have a nice hot bath. Then you can tell me all about South America. When they came out of the buffet, Mr. Brown had already found a taxi and he waved him across. The driver looked hard at Paddington and then at the inside of his nice clean taxi. Bears is sixpence extra, he said roughly. Sticky bears is ninepence. He can't help being sticky driver, said Mr. Brown. He's just had a nasty accident. The driver hesitated. All right, hop in. Paddington stood up on tiptoe on the tip up seat behind the driver so that he could see out of the window. Mr. Brown leaned forward. Number 32, Windsor Gardens. The driver cupped his ear with one hand. Go near you, he shouted. Paddington tapped him on the shoulder. Number 32, Windsor Gardens, he repeated. The taxi driver jumped at the sound of Paddington's voice and narrowly missed hitting a bus. He looked down at his shoulder and glared. Cream, he said, all over me new coat. Oh dear, thought Paddington, I'm in trouble again. Judy giggled and gave his paw a friendly squeeze. I think I'm going to like staying with the Browns, thought Paddington. The end. <laughs>